years ago was this buzz of activity, a central hub in the community. Conversation, worship, prayer, meals, meeting one another's need. There was a genuine positive spirit as they met together. They were authentic and real, energetic, enthusiastic, encouraging and engaging. They met daily. You'd imagine maybe they didn't work at all. Well, maybe the whole church didn't all meet all together every day. But there was a sense of stuff going on every single day. And that's my heart for church here. I want you to imagine with me what this church, what the church back then, 2,000 years ago, would have looked like. And maybe to apply that to our own day about what our church may well look like. Maybe their central meeting place was simply open through the day and people from the church came and went as they were able. Imagine what that, that, case, what that case would look like through our own potential building as you stand where you are today. What I'm about to read, I actually read and shared something very similar to this with the church back in April 2010. Particularly using the word then, I want you to imagine what church might be. Be. Someone comes to the church at around about 5 o'clock in the morning to open up because there's an early morning prayer meeting going on that's been growing for weeks. Early risers from the community don't understand it. From 7 onwards, several come in for breakfast, have a quick chat, share their day's needs and then go on to work. Someone's in the kitchen preparing communion for later. Just after 9, some flustered parents arrive for coffee and to offload their various children, uh, offload their various children orientated frustrations, having dropped them off at the local school. <laughs> Several share an idea of starting a parenting course and wonder what the local health visitor might think. The smell of fresh coffee, coffee seeps out into the streets. Good news begins to spread. Various community groups use the building throughout the day. It's rare to find a room that's not in use. Round about 11 o'clock, some of the older members meet up for a group that they've started running. Today, they're considering how to reach those who can't get out of their homes. 12 till 2, people working close by pop in to have their lunch at the church and catch up with others who are there. They look, look through into one of the halls to see the parent and toddler group in full swing. And here, older members, older members finish their group with a hymn of praise. One member arrives to hoover the office lounge, another to change the posters, and another to pick up the banner that had just fallen over. And another turns, turns up to give a lick of paint to one of the upstairs rooms. At two o'clock, there's then an advice clinic for those with money concerns. As one lady leaves, she comments to someone from the church at the reception desk that there's something so good she feels about the place and the people whenever she comes. Smiles are exchanged. She picks up a leaflet from the church on her way out. You never know, she said, I might just see you on Sunday. From three o'clock, it's kids turning up in their school uniforms, gummies in their mouths and swigging from Coke cans, some to be met by their parents, others to do homework in a side room with pop videos going on in the background to help them concentrate. Then from four till six, there's an after school club taking place. At six, there's a mixture of parents, kids, and people popping in on their way home from work. Stories are shared of what God has done that day. One person saying that someone from where he works, who the church have been praying for, has been healed. He wants to talk about he, how he can pray to God himself and whether or not there's any special words he'd have to use. There's several prayer requests listed on the notice board for the intercessory prayer team to pick up at seven. A couple of trustees arrive to prepare for a meeting that they have with members of the council on plans that the church has <coughs> wishing to extend because there's not enough room again. This meeting though this time has been at the council's initiative. We need more of what you're doing. It's making such a difference to the town, they say. Soon after, there's more hubbub in the kitchen, as food is prepared for an alpha course running that evening. Then, the youth workers rushing around like a mad thing, getting things organised for the youth group due to start at 8 o'clock. He's expected tonight probably about 60 young people to turn up. 
Noise increases as teenagers descend upon the church. There's a mixture of laughter and music from one end of the church and intense discussion at the other end in the group that we call Alpha. Other members arrive to clear up the kitchen or to help with the youth or to pray. At 10 o'clock, one young person is being consoled by someone in a corner. Elsewhere, a young couple are continuing their conversation, feeling that they should maybe no longer live, to just live together but be married. Other members arrive, one starts cleaning, another goes upstairs to photocopy some notes for their life group tomorrow. Another pops in just as they finish their shift at work and they see that the chairs need to be sorted. They ask if they can give John a hand. Others sing and lend a hand too. There's an evident oneness as each person plays their part. There's a cheer from somewhere as news break, breaks out that that young person in the corner has, each, has actually just become a Christian. This is shared with several others as they arrive and prepare to make some soup to take, back, to take out on the streets at midnight. As they venture out into the cold, a couple guys stay behind as a man has turned up badly beaten up. He knew that the church would be open and hoped that someone might be there to help him. They were. Round about one o'clock in the morning, he's on his way. Just as those on the soup run return, tired but satisfied. The day's events are committed to God. Those there pray for one another. They share bread and wine, closing with a rousing chorus of to God be the glory. The doors are closed and then there's silence. Just a few hours to go before it all starts again. When someone will arrive to unlock the doors of Dorchester Community Church. For another day, but another day of opportunity. What a church. We can be that church. Now that which was shared in our small dilapidated building just over six years ago, as you look around, can you see and feel today being a step towards that dream becoming reality? I want to read to you one, one verse from the Bible. It won't be the verse that you would have expected me to read necessarily, but hopefully you'll see why I'm reading it. <coughs> Since Jesus talking in Matthew 13, verse 44, he says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Where we stood now, of course, used to be a massive great big field. I guess in our day, all of us would say, well, we'd love to win the lottery so that we could pay for the new church and things like that. A very uh, noble uh, thing to say. But of course, even if we're saying we'd like to win the lottery, most of us who might say that don't even do it anyway. <coughs> In Jesus' day, there was no lottery. But what people longed for was to find and discover treasure in a field. The man that would have been finding this treasure in a field would have probably been a poor man. He would have then sort of wanted to bury that treasure again, then to sort of sell all he had to go and buy that field so he could then unpack and reveal that treasure on that field of what had been discovered. Recently, a friend of mine uh, called Ian, and I saw Ian, this is from Bournemouth, uh, only yesterday, I told him I was going to do this, it's uh, from a church leader in Bournemouth, he beat, he's a gardener and he dug up a pound coin in his garden, he thought, oh that's good, I've got a pound coin in the garden, but as I was then sharing in the group, um, as I say, it was a couple of months back, about uh, our new building at uh, Old Poundbury, he kind of had that verse come into his mind about the treasure that was found and how much uh, it meant to discover something that really people were looking for. And he then thought, pound, wouldn't it be great to, to actually bury a pound? We are in pound burying. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I want to give this to you, and this is the same dirty pound coin that he gave me, and I want to say as a prayer for your church that you might bury this. I was tempted to buy an ice cream, I'll be honest. <laughs> I want you to bury that, and my prayer for your church is actually that which people are longing to discover, if only we could have, would actually be discovered, not in a pound coin, not in winning the lottery, but in what they discover, where this pound is actually buried, here on the site of Dorchester Community Church. So they might see through you, and through what God is, and who he is, and what he says, ultimately what every single person is looking for. Freedom, forgiveness, peace and purpose. Pound coin. Pound 
Berry. We're going to bury this pound right now. Okay. <laughs>